Welcome back, folks, to World of Warships Legends. I'm Super Dave, and today's a build and play guide is on the Tier 8 American Tech Tree ship, Maine. And this is one of the more underrated ships, in my opinion. Uh, but anyway, let's get started on the build. This is the first time we're going to talk about a separate build here. Um, obviously, Azure Lane, New Jersey. Uh, as we've talked about in this whole series, our sims will work well with Sharnhorst and D. Ravel. Uh, you know, if you don't have Sharnhorst, you could, in fact, use uh, Cunningham or uh, even... I'd probably lean more towards John Fisher for a little extra range, but mostly the reload would be kind of handy. Not that this needs extra range. Now, we're going to talk about a build, honestly, the Colorado, Azure Lane, Colorado. As you can see, I will be eventually building uh, that as well. Would be very good for this build. Um, and would be a, a very, um, very useful because these guns are very accurate on the main, just like the Iowa. These are Iowa, Iowa, Maine, Montana. Kansas, they all, all the big 16 inch guns are the same on the Americans, and they are very accurate, good guns. Uh, so, you could use Colorado as well, I would that would be a good option. So, let's get into the ship here for our mods. The first mod is uh, main battery mod one, but again, guys, you could use any of these mods here. Um, for me, being aggressive, uh, I got this was my first ever tier 8 ship. I rushed this line really quickly. If I were to go back now, I would probably take either the AA range or uh, the secondary. Because honestly, these gun, these turrets, they, they turn pretty well. They're sub 20 seconds or 30 seconds, which is respectable for a battleship. Uh, so that's up to you on what you would want to do there. Uh, for uh, the second mod slot, I would definitely go with steering gears. Uh, the rudder and turning on this ship is not ideal at all. So if you want to dodge any torpedoes, you're going to want that. And for the third mod slot, concealment. Uh, more for the incoming fire dispersion than anything. And for uh, the fourth mod slot, the American Artillery Plotting Room 2 for the extra dispersion. Uh, now, as we go to look at the reload, you have six spotter planes. I have never even used that many. I think the most I've ever used is four. Um, again, though, it has a really solid heel like the Iowa and Colorado. Uh, and you do get three of them. It's like I said, it's not the UK great awesome heel, but it's it's really good and I think underrated and not talked about uh, on this line at all. So for the specs, uh, one thing I feel like this uh, Maine and Iowa don't get talked about enough on is how tanky these ships can really be if used properly. Uh, for survivability, it has 80,000 hit points. That is the highest uh, currently right now uh, besides uh, Soyuz. So it has a lot of health for a Tier 8 ship, uh, for Tech Tree ships. Very good and has solid torpedo reduction. Artillery, <laughs> there's not a lot of weak points to this ship. Uh, is you're going to understand uh, is that how much I like this ship. It has the 10 Iowa, uh, you know, 16-inch uh, guns. They're accurate. They don't lob like the Mark 6s or even Mark 5s of Colorado and Alabama, respectively. Uh, these don't lob nearly as much. You'll be pretty used to these guns by you get to this time because all the American high-end 16-inch guns are basically these, like Montana, Kansas, Iowa, Maine. Um, in for the reload, 28 seconds, not bad. It's nice to get that where you can get two shots on your spotter plane. And the 180 time, like I said, is not terrible. So that's a route with that first mod slot. If you guys want to take it, you could. 
And HG, as always with these guns, 5700. I wouldn't really recommend using it. It actually has a decent fire uh, setting chance, but I wouldn't use the HE. As showcased in the Iowa video, it's not very effective. And for the AP, 14,000, very effective AP on these things. For the AA defense, again, it's American Battleship. It is good. Um, you are going to shred a lot of planes with this thing if you do get in the opportunity and maneuverability almost 30 knots this thing is pretty quick it's almost cruiser speed on some levels and the downside to that is the turning circle and the rudder they are not good you it takes you four maps to make a circle like you could start on two brothers making a circle and you'll finish on haven before you get totally turned around all right so this when you're when you're making maneuvers, make sure you're aware of that because uh, you're gonna see in the match that I have for you guys today, I made a mistake with that, um, and it did hurt me a little bit. For concealment, thirteen eight. As always, you're in a battleship. You're not gonna sneak up on a dead moose in open water. For armor, to sing again like Iowa. Montana, this whole fast battleship line, really, really shines in my opinion. If if you're angled right, um, the let's start with the bow and stern. It is 32, which means only the Musashi Yamato guns are going to be the guns to get through this stuff currently in the game. And uh, once you take that off and the torpedo belt and you can see the big old superstructure that is kind of the weakness of this thing is it doesn't turn very well and uh, because it's such a long ship it won't turn very well and then also the superstructure you got a lot of health points allocated to it and like the rest of the American battleships at higher tiers um, and you're going to take some damage through there so we're going to go ahead and take this off. Now, the one thing to note is currently right now in the game, I do believe this 409 armor belt, the same that the Montana has, because this is literally just a Montana with two less turrets, uh, or, or two less guns in the, the front turret in the, the rear turret. So instead of 12, you got 10. This has the same armor belt, and I believe it still currently is highest in the game at 409. I don't think there's an armor belt thicker than that. Um, when you angle in this thing, you are just... You, there, people are not going to be able to citadel you in this. Now, if you go flat broadside, however, <laughs> you will get wrecked. <laughs> this is a kind of a narrow ship for how you know how big or long it is so when you do get hit from the side and you're sailing broadside you will notice it and you will get you know it will make you pay just like it will in the montana the iowa ohio you know you can get away with some you can get away with a lot when you're angled but if you're broadside you're gonna you're gonna pay dearly for your actions as we go ahead and start this match and check who we're up against, I do want to say it is disclaimer time. This is a beginner's guide to help out people just learning this ship or uh, learning the game in general. This is not for professional gamers that know everything there is to know about everything. There is also multiple ways to build and play ships, so opinions will vary. I am just a above average player. I don't claim to be the best player in the world. I just am a pretty darn good player. So I do make mistakes. You're going to see some in this match. And also, you didn't come to this video to see how to pronounce names. As I am very terrible at slaughtering other beautiful languages. It's almost an art form. So keep that in mind when you're watching this, guys. With that out of the way, you're going to see we are absolutely bottom tier. We're the only tier 8 on our team and one of two tier 8s in the entire 18-man lobby. So, uh, these are the matches I actually end up enjoying the most, where you kind of challenge a ship that you're in. I know other people don't care for them. Uh, one thing I want to note that I think I forgot to mention in the Iowa video, or maybe even Montana 
Do not put yourself in a bad position just to get all your turns involved. You can do the Warship Wiggle, which I've talked about a million times. I think other people have other names for it where you can just swing your butt out, shoot your guns, tuck it back in. Uh, or one thing I do in particular on this fast battleship line, I don't know if I do it much in this video, but you are going to see uh, a lot of times with these fast battleships, I'll shoot different targets with my front and rear turrets uh, when, it, when it makes sense. Uh, that way I can kind of be angled to both ships. I don't have to, you know, give my broadside up, it, you know, to shoot all my guns on target. Um, because if you angle in this ship properly, it is really hard to take you out. As you can see, there is Stalingrad right there. Now, I am kind of going a little bit broadside here, but I'm not spotted. That's the big key. I want to get this outside flank because... A lot of times, if you don't, them islands will get you in trouble that are out to my left there that you can see. Now, we shoot at the Stalingrad here. I assumed he was going to beach on the island, and he did. So I was pretty happy with my shot. As you can see, we just obliterate the Stalingrad, even at almost 20 kilometers. And that's why I don't mind having the really good range on this thing, because it will hit. And it will hit hard at range. It is one of the few battleships that is, you know, very accurate at long, long distances. Now, it doesn't mean you sit back and try to be a sniper, but you can see it pays, you know, it paid off right there to get that hit on the Stalingrad. The Stalingrad is a very good ship, and you're going to see later on, um, you know, I wish I could have gotten him out of the match with that shot because... He's going to play a role later on. With that being said, there's a Ibuki. And we are, that is the other tier, that's the only other tier 8 in the match. So uh, everything else besides that Ibuki is legendary. <laughs> and you're going to see I'm kind of watching him, keeping an eye on him. And I haven't really been spotted much, so I'm really wondering uh where the shimakaz or where the destroyer is and he actually pops up right here but that i remember that being my thought process in this match is i am not spotted yet maybe i can sneak all the way up here and get some really crazy stuff and as you see the ibuki is backing up here and you guys want to see a magic trick <laughs> uh you can just make the ibuki disappear just like that <laughs> Magic Man, now you see me, now you don't. So now my concern is 100% the Shimakaze right here. And there's also a, a Kerr first. I actually don't shoot here. And that's because I'm trying to go and not be spotted here. Now, there is a plane, but you can see I'm not spotted by the plane. I'm actually spotted because I'm on fire. And I still, you know, uh, I'm going to be spotted that way. Now, the plane is going to continue to spot me uh, if I wasn't. But I was trying to go dark here. I knew torpedoes were coming. As you can see, it's why I slowed down. Um, we do, in fact, only eat one of them. And I am, what I'm, well, the reason I wanted to do this is I did not want to push on the side. I seen, uh, once I seen there's a, a destroyer, uh, a cruiser and two battleships coming this way. I do not want to be the only target for them. This is a tanky ship, but you're not going to get survive that type of fire, especially with the Yamato that can overmatch me if I try to uh, bow tank. So you, I got to be careful. Now here, you see, I don't get spotted. Now I could shoot this Shimakaze, but the reason I don't is that curve first is looking directly at me and I'm only going to have five of my ten guns on the Shimakaze. So in my view, in my opinion, in that exact moment, it's not worth me dying and being because I'd be broadside to the curve first. As you see, his guns never left where I was. So the second I shoot, he was definitely going to hit me. Um, and that would have hurt quite a bit. As you can see, we do shoot now that we're behind the island. We are not spotted. And uh, their Shimakaze is still spotted. And, I, you know, and he gets worn out. I think our Shimakaze actually takes him out, which is really cool to see a Shimakaze use guns. 
Uh, that's the way I like to play it as well. I don't like to just sail around sending torpedoes everywhere. I do that too, but the guns are not, not terrible on it. And as you can see, I make this turn so I don't run broad into all that. I could have eaten a bunch more torpedoes. I could have walked right into two battleships and a cruiser out there. I could have put myself in a world of hurt. But uh, I should have turned in right here uh, to get another angle. I Obviously, our battleship is coming up to help. Um, and I was actually a turn in between these islands, and that's the misplay on my part here. I definitely should have done that. Um, I'm trying to get a different angle than our battleship buddy that just went by. Um, but, and you can see I'm trying to go into the, the, um, gap here. And then you're going to see, uh, I notice a battleship get spotted. And I'm thinking, oh, he is broadside. And we could do a lot here to help our team in the middle of the map because he's kind of put himself in a pretty good position to, uh, you know, without us shooting at him, he's in a good position to counter our seaside. As you see, we kind of get unlucky there. We, I honestly was thinking I was going to be able to do more. Uh, you're going to see a couple salvos in this. I get kind of unlucky. Um, normally the guns are very, very stout on this thing and accurate, um, but as you can see, now I'm kind of out of position on this side of the flank, and I'm letting my curfers know I can't help them because it's going to take me about five maps to turn around here, so I do 100% realize I need to go and get turned around, So, but I know I have to go around this island, there's no way to make that turn inside. Um, so that that shot at the Kerr first in the middle of the map probably was not worth it. Uh, but you have to assume I'm going to do more damage than what I did there. That was kind of an anomaly. Um, but you can see we're going to make our turn back in. And uh, my big thing is, is I want to create a different angle so me and my teammate over there are not just you know going to get focused on by what is left over there. Um, like I said, that was my major mistake in here, and you can see it, it takes this ship forever to turn around, um, you know, and here you're going to see it pretty unlucky here on this curve first. You're going to see me send out a very good Savo, as I did put it, is you know, it, and it looked accurate until it started, you can see it kind of had some vertical uh, dispersion to it, and we only deflected one shell off of him. Uh, and then you're going to see again, he gets pretty lucky for sailing completely broadside here. Um, and we're going to go ahead and go to shoot, and then he's going to go dark. <laughs> so he kind of avoided, uh, you know, getting quite a bit of damage on him. And then, you know, his smart play on his part, once he saw that I was shooting at him, he started to turn out. Um, and we are going to try to help the center of the cap or the center of the map and also, uh, the, you know, get rid of that curve first. We're not going to chase him, but I want to put myself in position that if he makes a mistake, I want him to pay for it. Um, again, not a, uh, terrible map or a terrible placement here. Cause now I can affect. Um, our side, which we've completely won our A cap, which is a positive. You should always win your side. And now I'm able to help out with the uh, middle two caps, which is very good. As you can see, I start to slow down here because the curve first is backing up. And at 11 kilometers, that, you know, from a main, from anything American 16 inch, is going to be rough, right? Um, and you can see we get a shot on him. And, you know, no Citadels, but we still took 20 plus thousand off of him um, and, and really, you know, helped to work on getting rid of him there. So uh, Kerr, the other Kerr first and you can see uh, the Stalingrad are showing up here and you see that Stalingrad does get a good hit on me. So I'm going to start to turn in an angle. If you do not angle, if you just let a Stalingrad shoot your broadside, 
You guys, it can be super painful. Like, people overlook Alaska and Stalingrad. They can really do a lot of damage to you. As you can see, even here, I'm starting to angle well, and he still chunks me there. Uh, so me angling the, you know, angling the him, you guys might laugh, but if you don't angle to a Stalingrad or a, or a, a um, Alaska, you they are one hundred percent gonna murder you if they're using AP. And you can see Stalingrad shoots back. This time we are a little bit better at angle, but he still punches you. Like I need, I did need to angle a little bit more, but I was a little bit worried about. Uh, the curve first out there, I'm not getting, uh, you know, putting myself in a bad position there. So now that the Stalingrad is um, kind of behind the mountain, we're going to work our way over. And I was trying to get ready to cut him off, but that was kind of my goal here is, uh, you know, the curve first to my left is running away. So I'm thinking, man, if I can get into this middle of this map and just really uh, affect it, because you can see um, we're losing our points. We do have caps, but they have, you know, they have two more ships than us. So I got to try to make some sort of play here. Um, and you can see I'm radared by Stalingrad. And this is a shot I'm really glad I took, but... Uh, because Mino, even though he's out far, and a lot of times they're going to dodge us, you got to take this shot because a Mino can be really hard to get rid of if they start hiding or you can't see them. As you can see, we do get a very accurate salvo at distance again. Now, I wish you guys noticed it late. I didn't think the Stalingrad was going to push to a point where I could see him. I just didn't think he was gonna make that play, you know, because it's not a, generally that would not be a good play. So I did try to fire anyway, just to see if I could get something from my back turrets to maybe hit him. Uh, it doesn't. And uh, you can see now our team is completely whittled down. There's not much I can do here now. Um, you know, we did what we could in this match. We won our side. Um, and we helped in the middle, you know, with the Stalingrad and the Kerr first, but that was not enough. And as you can see over here, um, now we are starting to lose the cap of C. And our two teammates over there are behind a mountain. I'm sure it's just because they were getting pummeled over there. Uh, like I said, I did try to help, but I noticed the, the D cap was starting to get converted or was starting to get taken by A. So obviously the destroyer is here right now. So I'm thinking we don't have much chance to win, but if we're going to, I have to stop the destroyer from capping uh, D as I see the tor torpedoes there. So I kind of know he's off in front of me, but I was trying to make sure to see if I could get a shot uh, on anything over there to help them guys out in the meantime. As you can see, I'm undetected, so I know he's basically kind of in front of me a little bit. And I'm assuming he t sent torps to the end of this island. So you can see I'm kind of turning out from there. Because if I was in his shoes, I'd want to send a torps to the end of that island. Um, and you're going to see I'm spotted now. So currently, he definitely is to my left somewhere. As I'm getting ready to shoot the Montana because he's broadside. And I don't think he that Montana knew I existed, actually. Um, so as I get ready to shoot, see I'm detected, he's right kind of where I thought he was, I actually thought he was a little bit closer, and I know he's shooting at me to try to get me to turn into his torps. So as you can see, his torps do come there, and as you can see, the match does actually come to an end there. Uh, again, <clears throat> I, you know, we can't do more than what we did there, we won our side, we helped the middle, we even tried to help the other side. Uh, unfortunate with teammates, it happens sometimes, but 1800 in a loss is a very good base XP, um, and I did help quite a bit, uh, on our team. Anyway, you guys have a wonderful day, and I will see you next time, folks. Have a good one.